Um, as Gail said, I'm Andrew Howard. I chair the Families and Carers Together in Buckinghamshire, or FAC Bucks for short, because we can't get the rest on the letterhead. Just as when I ended up chairing the forum last September, I am not completely sure why I'm here in front of you today, but I guess that I made a little trouble for the grants team at CAF earlier in the year, and our pal Gail Walsh is having her revenge. Always be concerned when one of your predecessors ends up in a position of influence. You can get away with very little. So I've been asked to say something about engaging with elected members, county councillors, MPs, etc. And I do so on the strict fact bucks understanding that all I say is our shared experience and not just my own personal achievement. If it were, it would be a very short speech, which of course, in hindsight, you may wish it had been. Setting the scene, Fact Bucks and its predecessor PCF have been active and run by parents for a decade or two. So we do find ourselves in the fortunate position of having a track record and a clear place in the county order, so to speak. At the same time, Buckinghamshire is a very conservative area, in both the small and large C sense. The county council is the only one that has never been anything other than conservative controlled, and all the MPs for the county come from that party, and did so even in 1997. So this is not a place for radical action, nor no, or new wave agendas, and that in some sense dictates the way we act. Where you find yourselves, your own local politics may be very different, and your opportunities will vary accordingly, and even change with each spin of the electoral wheel. So forgive me if our work seems a little dull. We have agreed as a forum that we are happy to accept that we do not campaign. And we also seek to be pragmatic and to understand the perspective and competing demands of those with whom we work. So we slowly build our reputation and seek change organically in the measured way that is the only way in Buckinghamshire. And we are having success. We are actively involved with the SEND and commissioning teams in co-production of a fledgling kind, but nevertheless co-production that is sought out by them as well as us. So if this is true, why, you may ask, would we need, have any need for elected members at county level and certainly MPs? The answer is simply that those SEND officers and commissioners ultimately work for these people. In the end, the elected members, and especially the cabinet members, who in our case are education, skills, children's services, and health and well-being, are in charge of the staff in County Hall, although they claim sometimes that it isn't true. And that is why knowing them is vital, for it can unblock challenges in the staff-led system. At times, it can also make it easier for the staff as it gives support to change that is needed and even unlock resources. A few examples include the work we did in making the cabinet member aware of the short breaks project the year before last, its vital role in aiding families who might otherwise collapse and gained her support through the budget process to significantly reduce the impact of cuts in funding. We did not save the whole budget, but we came away a lot better resource than we feared and we are beginning again this month with a new cabinet member in preparation for autumn 2016. We have always invited the cabinet members to our professionals meetings that happen twice a year and we have found that they like hearing the issues raised around the table because often they don't get to hear the full story. The relationship built that way with the last cabinet member for education skills meant that we could push the proposals to alter home to school transport into a working party with parent involvement. That has managed through pragmatism and kindness, to show that the proposals for multi-pickup points and the use of public transport in rural Buckinghamshire rather than taxes just will not work, and they have bit the dust. We always invite the cabinet members to, attack our, to attend our fact events, which they often do, and some have been known to stay all day. We also work out the issues that most influence those members, their particular constituents or passions, and we unashamedly play on them. The new cabinet member for education and skills represents an area of our county with a large Muslim population and we have a good relationship of support among that community and with the local imam. So we simply arranged for the latter to attend a recent event at our cost and invited the former to join us, which he was very happy to do. We asked him for nothing that day other than to be seen. We will collect our dues at a later date. <laughs> 
However, his predecessor, who has more experience of us, has now moved on to health and well-being, and we have in him in our sights as we seek better influence in all things health. The councillors have significant local power, especially the cabinet members, but we have found that there is nothing like an MP's headed paper to get movement or to attract attention. For example, a recent change to the provision of salt in the county, seeking to give schools clear links with a therapist and consistency to most users, good in some ways, has resulted in the loss of a specialist for Down syndrome. I was not aware, but there is an all-party parliamentary group relating to Down syndrome. There seems to be quite a lot of such groups, and they have stated that it is essential that such a specialist provision should exist. This is not binding, but it's a good stick to wave around, especially when all the local MPs are happy to put their name to a letter reminding the commissioning team of this fact. You see, all party groups have the advantage of being non-political, so there is no whip or street cred problem with supporting them. Also, as MPs are not responsible for delivering local services, they seem happy to question local decisions. Just look at the stand the MP for Whitney made against the closure of Oxfordshire's cat children's centres. For SALT, we have only secured a promise to review provision when recommissioning takes place early next year. But it is movement, and we will be co-producing that recommissioning as well, just as we did for CAMS last year. The other thing we've found is that MPs and councillors are real people with real relationships and families. And this often makes them more responsive to our requests. It is worth finding out if one of your local members has personal experience of SEND and then simply asking for their endorsement. We are very fortunate in Bucks as one of our MPs chairs the parliamentary group on autism, but more importantly, one of the members has a son with autism and a personal family experience of coming to terms with that reality and the need to secure the support that the child needed. As a result, that individual is very happy to make time to give short opening speeches or such for our events, which increases media as well as parent interest. MPs can also ask questions of ministers on behalf of their constituents. It is another route, at least, to getting things raised, even if change is for the next generation. We have not yet used this one, but we might do so on the question of the SEND reform grant and its continuation post-March 2016, as its removal will simply destroy any hope of transferring successfully to the new world of EHCPs in Buckinghamshire. It will not be a campaign, but it will be a request for support to the DFE once the spending review is complete. I cannot guarantee that it will change anything, but we should at least get a reply. You see, that is our little advantage in Buckingham. The MP whose son has ASD is also Speaker of the House of Commons, and he always gets a reply from ministers. As I said, seek out the ones who have sympathy based on real experience, for they understand what it is really like to live in a family with a child or young person with SEND. None of the above will sort all the challenges the system faces, nor make individual family lives better overnight. But the role of the forums is to give parent carers a voice, and reminding those with power that they have a responsibility as well cannot make things worse.